Okay, guys. So day 13, day 13 of our lead code challenge. I'm pretty happy with the reception I've been getting for my videos. I, I saw people really like the quickest path for a computer science education. Uh, I'm, from now on, I'm gonna get some uh, answer questions from some of the viewers. I'm gonna leave a form on the description if you have any suggestions for the channel or just a question you would like solved, some concept you would like to be better explained please fill out the form. I really want, want to uh, build a community around the channel. I think we are all learning. I'm not better than anyone. So I wanna, I, uh, I wanna just get people together to, to improve as computer scientists, as programmers. Also, we have the Facebook group. It's also in the description. So just join the group. We discuss the problems. We discuss about the contest. I just want to build a community of uh, lifelong learners. So let's go, without further ado, let's go to the problem. Problem 687, longest unit value. This problem is actually very similar to the one we solved yesterday. That's why, that's why I didn't go straight to this one. And this problem was the second problem from the contest I took part in last week and I couldn't solve. I got kind of close, but there are some concepts that are the that, that I, I didn't know uh, that prevented me from getting this problem done. So it's a really good practice. So let's read it through. Given a binary tree, find the length of the longest path where each node in the path has the same value. This path may or may not pass through the root. So for example, uh, 5, 5, 5, you have two connections. And 4, 4, 4, you have two connections. Uh, why? Because they are all the same value. This is very, if you guys watched the video yesterday, which I really recommend, this problem is very similar. It's very similar. So we're trying to see how many edges we have and then seeing how, what is the longest value. Yesterday we wanted the longest path, but the, the ideas are pretty similar. And I want you guys to look at a, 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 a drawing here so you guys can understand. So, First thing, uh, what, what do you guys think we're going to do? We're going to do that technique I talked about yesterday, which is having a variable. We'll have a variable at the beginning that we'll be updating every time we go through the, the recursion stack. So I'm going to talk more about that when I code, but let's look at this schema here. So we have a tree with five nodes, they're all fives, and we want to know the longest univalue path. First, let's just by inspection see what is the longest univalue path. So the longest univalue path is this, this, and either one of these two. Either one of these two. And it's important to notice it's either one of those two, not both of them, because this will be important during the recursion. So one, two, and three. So the longest, and you, and you count how many arrows you have, not how many nodes you have. We have always, so if arrows are n, the nodes are always n plus one. So we have, we have four nodes for three connections. In terms of, of the thinking behind this problem. So let's look at this node here. What is the longest univalue path? For this one, it's one and two. So you look both to the left of the node and to the right of the node. If the value is equal to the root, then you add one. And same here, one. So for five, the longest univalue is two. And we will have a variable called best, like yesterday, that will be comparing at every iteration, best. 
okay? So, let's suppose we initialize best to zero. So what, what is a longest unit value, zero or two? So you, you add this one and this one. So the longest is two, it's two. And then you go up the recursion stack. So now that we evaluated this root here, obviously you first evaluate here, here, but it's gonna be none. Then we evaluate this one, then we go to, the, to this one. And then this one is gonna be zero. This one will be zero, because you have none to the left, none to the left, so the longest unit value is zero. You have no arrows coming from this node. But if we look at this, what, what are we going to pass to the root node here from this, from this node? Are we going to pass two or one? Actually, it's one instead of two. Why is that? Because we can't do this path with this path. You go down here and you either go to the left or to the right when you're looking for the longest path. So you're actually gonna pass the max of both left and right. Of left and right. Or just put left, right. Okay, it's gonna be clear when I code it. It might be a little bit confusing now. But when we're evaluating the longest path at this root, we summed we summed both left and right. But the value we will be returning to the node, to the root node, will be the maximum. Because we go either to the left or to the right. We don't, we can't go, the longest path is not five, 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 this five and this five. It's here, 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 and then either one of those. And this is a very important distinction. Let's code and it, I hope hopefully it will be clear. So first we do what we did yesterday. We declare a variable that will be global. That will be you. You can manipulate it at every place from the function, and this one will keep track of the longest unit value path. Then we're gonna declare a. We're gonna declare a function, and now we're gonna do. We're gonna see if it's always with these three problems. The base case usually is if it's root, if it's none, if the root is none. If it's none, you return zero. Now we do the recursion call. So I should you pass root. We're gonna create two, three two, uh, two variables left and right, and we're gonna call the function longest with roots.left and roots.right. This is an interesting construction. So you can declare two variables. You can declare two variables and uh, assign values to them in one line like this using comma. So this is the same as me doing like left equals longest roots.left and here doing the same thing with right but you're doing one line. So here we are calling the recursion stack, right? So now we're gonna do the following. So this is left, uh, I'll call left P for path and right P. So now we're gonna create another variable called, and this will give us the longest path, the longest uni value path from both left and right. So suppose I'm here at root. I'm gonna look at the longest uni value path from the left and from the right. And that's what this recursion calls. So I'm gonna look at this five and this five. So now left. We create another value called left. And now you guys will understand what I'm gonna do. Left equals left p plus one if root left and root dot val root point of all else zero and same thing with the right 
wait up that you guys will understand. Root dot right and root dot val equals root dot right dot val. So now I'm looking at the left node and the right node. If the left node is equal to the root, that's what I'm doing this line. So if the first I check if it exists, that's what I'm doing here. If it does, let's see if the root val equals the root dot left val. If it is, we add one to the maximum longest uni value path we got from this call here, from here. We'll add one. Otherwise, zero. And same with the right. And now we're going to update the longest. We're going to update the longest path, longest variable. And this is equal to left plus right. And return max left right. So the longest path. This is where we update the variable longest. The longest path is the sum of the left call, left recursion call with the right recursion call. So that's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. But we only return the maximum of one of them. So if we're at root, if we're at this value here, where this root and we're counting how many arrows we have the longest uni value path you can either go to the left or to the right that's why you return max that's why you return max but when you're checking if it's the longest path you sum you sum this arrow with this arrow so uh, return max and then longest, we call the longest function, and we return self the longest. Exactly like we did yesterday. So we have a variable called longest, and we are gonna update it. It's forever call, and then we return it. And okay, let's first see if it passes. This problem. Now that I'm thinking, you guys may be, be confused. This problem is hard. This problem is hard. I couldn't solve it. I, I tried to do this problem for 40 minutes, and I couldn't solve it. So if you're struggling, understand. What I recommend is to stare at the code for 20 minutes, see if you don't understand some line if you don't ask on the comments that i'll try to be clear i'll answer your questions but this is a really cool problem because you're not only just using stack uh just using recursion you're actually using this technique of having a variable and updating it in every iteration every recursion call and this technique, by what I notice, shows in many different problems. So if you if you understand this problem, it will help you solving a lot of other problems. And that's one of the things with those algorithms problems. Once you get the well-known tricks, not that you'll be able to solve all of them, but it's going to be much easier. You have more tools to solve problems. So... Hopefully this video was helpful. I think I might I have gotten a little confused in the middle explaining. But please ask questions and I'll answer every single question you guys have. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed. Cheers.